Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Airspace Conference and Trade Show outside Washington, D.C. Number one gathering of U.S. Navy leaders from around the world, along with their international counterparts to talk about strategy, technology, budgets, and more. Our coverage here is sponsored by GE Marine, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and Leonardo DRS. And we are here on the BAE System Stand to talk to my friend Charlie McCullough, who is a director of uh, uh, Naval Maritime, uh, whatever you guys call it, at BAE System systems. It's always always a pleasure seeing, especially a distinguished National Capital uh, Council member of the of the Navy League. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank uh, you for this interview. Uh, it's it's always a pleasure. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the Virginia Payload Module. Sure. Obviously, the Virginia class uh, program very very important to the U.S. Navy. Hopefully, getting uh, going from two boats a year to to three there for a little bit to, to build back the shortfall in uh, nuclear attack submarines. Charlie, when most people think about Virginia payload module, they have a tendency of thinking about the two tubes out in the front of the boat and not actually the block five configuration that has four more tubes uh, that are midships on the ship. Talk to us a little bit about the program and kind of the capability increase that's going to give future Virginia class boats. Sure, thanks. Thanks for that uh, question. So just to let you know, and maybe you don't know, that back in the 80s, our company built these tubes for the Ohio class submarine. Right. So we have that as a history. We have that, uh, you know, in our in our portfolio. When the and since then we've been building the propulsor, which is the back end of the submarine, for many many years. Great on time, on schedule, great great performance. So we were kind of surprised, and that was our niche business, when the Navy came to us and said, "Hey, could you help us out with these tubes?" And we said, "Sure, we try that." So as a very risk adverse uh, organization, as they should be. They uh, started a little bit. They gave us a very complex tri-metallic weld to do. We did it with them, for them, for which they could find no other company in the, in the country to do. We performed very well on that contract. They said, okay, can you start, how about some tubes? Would you like to build some tubes for us? So we got our way back into the tube business right. for this particular very critical asset. Uh, for the uh, our, for armed forces, right? You asked about flexibility. So what the Virginia payload module does, it adds four large tube cells to the Virginia class. It stretches, it takes the existing mod block four and stretches it to put these four uh, tubes uh, into, the, into the submarine. What that allows is for you to put payloads in those tubes to whatever you see the mission need. Right. So it's not tied to a specific mission or a specific, a specific weapon. It could be a UAV, a USV, it could be other weapons, it could be, you know, HADR, you, you name it. So now the submarine becomes much more flexible, much more versatile for the U.S. US Navy. Um, and uh, for for uh, those, by the way, I thought that was really funny. You know, hey, hey, guys, how about some tubes? You know, <laughs> it was like, huh, which is a way to get the customer's interest. And obviously, you guys uh, are a subcontractor to General Dynamics. Uh, you know, you supply that uh, to them. Um, and for folks who don't know, on on the BA systems on the UK side of it, you guys are actually the shipbuilder of choice, building uh, nuclear attack submarines for uh, the Royal Navy. And of, of course, we're uh, the guys who designed and and introduced the propulsor set, which then the U.S. Navy then uh, adopted. Um, so, how much length do you add to a standard uh, 774, a standard Virginia class submarine, to include this payload module? And 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 weight, you know, I mean, how does it change um, the the submarine on sort of a, a structural basis? Yeah. So, um, thank you for that question. You're asking the wrong guy. So we we, <laughs> we supply tubes. Okay, they come to us. We, it's a build to print. Right. So look okay. for us for a, a quality, on time, on schedule, on cost uh, supplier of submarine components. The propulsor being the first one. Right the tube part, which is the second one, and now they're going into the tubes. So I believe the number's about 90 feet. Right. The weight, I don't know at all, okay. but they, they've stretched it and they've done all the math to say that's the best way to bring this capability to the, to the force, which they've lost or are losing as they decommission the SSGNs. Right. Um, and, and now you look at a much more distributed fleet architecture, right? Because before, it was those 154 tubes or so, if I have the number right, for the SSGNs, whereas now you're distributing that capability across uh, across uh, across the force. Um, talk to us a little bit about schedules, roughly when should we expect to see the Block 5 ships getting out there? Yes, again, our job is to supply tubes per the schedule for the U.S. Navy. They've asked us to deliver these. We actually have, um, um, the ability to supply those tubes to their, their requirement, but as the schedule 
I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm a BD guy. <laughs> okay, Charlie. Well, listen, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck on the program in Thank terms you. of uh, helping uh, augment capability out there for the U.S. We are Navy. very excited about that, really, to have a, a new role for the U.S. submarine fleet. Thank you.